Today I'm going to show you how to use the No Tan app and we're going to paint two buddies. Let's get started. In a minute we're going to go to the beginning of this painting. Where we are right now is pretty much in the middle, closer to the end. But what I want to do is show you how I use the No Tan program. This is an app that costs about four dollars and I want to show you how I a preview of how I get started. So here it is. Here's my photo. You put your photograph in and then I put it on the no tan setting. And what I'm doing with my finger is I'm looking to see where the darkest darks are. I've dialed it all. All I'm having is white and black. That's all I've reduced. Not white, black, and gray, but white and black. That's what the no tan is, white and black. And what I'm doing is looking to see where the darkest darks are because I can't pick that up from the photograph. Now what I do is I can press three levels and now what it's going to give me is black, gray, and white. So I can see where my darks, my mediums, and my lights are going to be. And what I'm doing is I'm using that bar below for me to determine where I want them to be in the painting because I could paint the painting anywhere I want to. But what I want to do is have a nice balance of darks, mediums, and lights and I want to make sure that the dark shapes are clearly defined so that I don't end up with the same number of dark shapes, medium shapes, and light shapes. So this is how I go about strategically before I even start deciding what my plan will be. And I wanted you to see that because when we go to the beginning of the painting, before I do any of my dark, medium, or light value dabs, which you see up there on the left, you'll see that I've already had that in my head and that is now over to the side on the left. And probably what I've done is dialed it to the no tan setting and only put in the darks, where I see the darkest darks. And so, although the photograph is there, I can't pick up that information from the photograph yet. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the no tan on the app right now, because I'm gonna put in my darkest darks. Now, these are not gonna end up being, they're gonna end up being darker than they appear now when I'm done with the final, finished painting, but I want to map them in first. So that's what's happening here. And all I'm doing is looking at shape. Now I've put my first dark in the dark column. The, dark, the D is for dark, M is for mediums, L is for lights. At some point I stop uh, doing that at all because as usual I forget that I'm filming, <laughs> but, but for initially I, I, I do remember to do it. So there are my darks. It doesn't necessarily have to make any sense and you saw the value finder come up really quickly. Now what I'm doing is I've picked, I've mixed up another dark because one color isn't going to do it. I need many dark colors in order to fill in where my darks are. And so that's what's happening here. So I do my mixing and I want to make sure that everything in the dark column is about the same value. There I brought the value finder up to check. I want, was looking for something that would be what I consider now lighter than the dark, so mid-tone. Wow, things went really quickly there. I was making some decisions. So what I was doing was comparing value dabs because now I'm starting to leave my darks and go into the mid-range. Now, there's lots of color mixing going on as well, because, but let's not talk about that. The color mixing doesn't matter. Um, what value, this is really about value, and that's really all I'm going to get from my no tan program is darks, mediums, and lights. It's not going to tell me anything about what my color mixes could be, how they, you know, whether they could be warm or cool. None, none of that information is, is going to be there. But in terms of strategy, I can map out my initial strategy and follow along with it using the no tan program and also then dialing the gray, in the grayscale so that I can make some decisions about the midtones and the lights as well. Now, as you can see, I don't ever use any of that um, whiteout or the masking fluid. And part of that is because the program helps me see where those whites are and I can remember not to drive over them. What's happening right now is I'm using a triad. My usual triad for white is cerulean blue, um, a rose, and Naples yellow. If I use all three of those together, they'll blend together and make sort of a light gray, a light warm gray. So you can now look and see all, this is the picture that I showed before we began looking at the no tan on the uh, 
on the uh, iPad. So here it is again. This is me deciding what to do at this point. I've already gotten all the information I needed to get to, to get, get to this point. Um, now I'm not sure what I what information I'm looking for. I think probably what I'm looking for is, yeah, I thought so, is now I'm going back to my initial. I've gone back and put no tan in, not without the grayscale, and now I'm going right back to where I initially started. What I thought were my darkest darks, they aren't dark enough now, so I'm going to put this in. And this is a mix of three different colors as well. But I'm not doing triad work. I'm not putting them in individually. I'm putting them in as a total mass. Because there just isn't that much real estate to cover. If there was a lot of real estate to cover, I would break it up and make it into a triad mass. But I don't need to do that. So remember, I have the photograph, but I'm also using that NOTAN program right now to find out where my darkest darks are. And I've determined that. That's been my own aesthetic choice of where I want them to be. So there's nothing in the light column because the light column now, okay, now what I've done is I've stayed in the NOTAN. Wow, that went really quickly. But what I did was stayed in the NOTAN program and dialed it all the way up until there were no, almost no whites anymore because I want to make sure that the whites that I've left are important. Um, not too many of them in relationship to the rest of the picture. And what most people would probably use uh, using masking fluid. So that's what I've done there. So what I'm saying, long way to say, I use the NOTAN program to first find out where my darkest darks are and apply those. And then I use it as I get near the end of the painting to make sure that my whitest whites, that I preserve them and that the shapes are correct. Everything else, of course, ends up being a mid-tone. And I do use the grayscale of the NOTAN, NOTAN program um, when I when I'm um, strategizing that. I call it the Notanizer. I think that is called the Notanizer. Yeah, that's what the actual app is called if you search for it. But uh, but the, but it always sounds like a superhero to me. You know, the Notanizer comes out of the sky and <laughs> helps artists of all kinds. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so what's happening now is putting in some sort of a background of that, of that horizontal of the ground is a little bit more, mm -mm, a little bit, more, more, what, what do I want to say? More dominant than I, than I want it to be. And I thought, oh boy, I better get some verticals going on here because uh, that is really, I didn't mean to do it, but I really cut those two dogs completely in half. And that, I did not mean to do that. So now I'm putting in what I would call final touches. And this, I'm picking up this information from the photograph. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, I get some verticals in there because like I said, I think I shouldn't have put the, hor the horizon, it's not the horizon, but the ground right where it is, but that's okay. I, I you know, had a momentary moment, a moment in my brain where I forgot that, uh, di that nature doesn't like straight lines. It would have been better with a diagonal or some sort of uh, softer uh, edge there. Always forget, you know, you're, you're always gonna forget something in a painting, right? Because there's so much to remember, lost and found edges, the painting, uh, the mixing, the uh, the value range, the strokes, there's a lot going on. So uh, I will always forgive myself for forgetting something <laughs> because it does happen. And um, I think one of the, I, I did go back and fix one of the eyes, although in the photograph, the, the, the dog's eyes were wacky, which was interesting to me. It kind of showed the personality that uh, Fancy has. This is Callie, my dog, the, the Collie, and uh, her walking partner, Fancy, their best buddies. And this is one of Callie's first walks since her coyote attack, and she has completely recovered, which is a huge relief to me. Now I'm doing one of the things that you should never do, which is I picked up a small brush, and I'm fiddling. You know, fiddling, nothing good ever comes from fiddling unless you have a violin to play on. <laughs> this is not the time. I always say to myself, use as few strokes as possible. If you get the thing done and it's adequate, leave it be. You know, take the day, the rest of the day to decide if you want to add to it or change something. But in general, this is not the time to pick up the small brush that's just asking for trouble. 
But I was in the moment, and sometimes in the moment, I'm not thinking as clearly as I would like to. And I think what happened was I realized that uh, there was only a little bit of that yellowish orange on the collie, and I wanted to spread it around a little bit, have it integrated into the painting. So that's what I started to do. And that's, that's artistic license. Artistic license, of course, you can do with whatever you want to do. And I decided I wanted the dog's tongues to be pinker. These the, the fi finishing touches are probably the, the funnest part because it, it, it's, it's just up to your, it, it's decorating. It's like baking a cake and now you get to decorate it. That's all. So here's the final painting, which is Callie and Fancy, who are best buddies when they go walking. And I hope that helps you understand the NOTAN program, which I really enjoy very much. And remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel if you would consider it or ask a pal if they will join. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.